Hey guys, welcome. It's Linda Montgomery with Davis Road Designs, where I like to paint furniture and other household items back to life and give them a repurpose. So today's video, which is actually my first YouTube video, so keep that in mind, we are gonna take this very ordinary cabinet door and turn it into a really cute wall hanging. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I did that. So stay tuned and do some learning. All right, in order to decoupage this, I am using my Dixie Bell clear coat medium, a plastic bag, of course a brush. And um, I had actually painted this with Dixie Bell white boss to begin with. It, because that way your colors are gonna be more true on whatever you're decoupaging. So here I am fitting my paper to my cabinet door the way I want it. And what I did is I kind of pressed it along the top so that I would know where I wanted it to fit. Now I'm just going around making sure that I have my paper where I want it. Now I'm gonna take a brush and use a fairly kind of a medium coat, not too thin, not too thick to put down to decoupage my paper onto. So now that I've got my clear coat down, I'm fitting my paper and placing it onto the area that I have the clear coat. The nice thing about these papers are you can move them around a little bit. They're not going to rip and tear on you so that you can make sure your placement's where you want it. And as you can see, I was kind of moving it around here. I wanted to make sure that um, I had it centered the way I wanted it and that um, it came real close to the edges on that cabinet. And I wanted to make sure that I had enough left over on each side so that I could uh, make any corrections that I might need to. So I'm just pressing it down a little bit with my hands, but I'm gonna grab a plastic bag. The reason for that is there's less friction with that. I have a lot less chance of ripping my paper. So I start towards the middle and work my way out, working out any air bubbles as I go. And you can see this takes a little bit of time, but it's fairly simple. Um, if you didn't want to put the clear coat underneath the whole thing, you could actually do part at a time, maybe put it in the middle, work towards each edge or put it at the top or bottom and work down. That's all good too. Um, and this paper, like I said, is pretty forgiving. So. You just take your plastic bag on your hand and remove those air bubbles as you move along. So you'll see right here, um, there needed to be a little more of the product underneath, no problem. Grab your brush, add a little more underneath where you need it, and uh, just go back to pushing it down and push, working those air bubbles out until you get your paper where you want it, no bubbles, and nice and smooth.
So I thought that I had taken a video of uh, sanding the paper off to where I wanted it, but I do not see that I, I must not have recorded it. So when you're done with this process, let it dry. Then what you're gonna wanna do is take sandpaper along the edge and it will perfectly take your decoupage down to where you want it on the edge of this cabinet. Also, um, I did make some flowers and so forth using some air dry clay. And then I attached those while they were still wet with tight bond, quick and thick. I then had painted my outside of the cabinet with drop cloth by Dixie Bell. And then I wanted to match some of the colors in the picture. So I was gathering the colors up. I, I also had put a clear coat over my drop cloth color so that if I had other colors in there or if I wanted to remove any colors, it would be easy. It wouldn't stick in the color that I already had down. I also wanna add here that once I got the picture sanded down on the edges where I wanted it, I used a spray lacquer on the picture itself. I did a very first, uh, very light first coat, and then I did three or four coats after that, and I let that dry. What that does, it protects that decoupage paper so that when I go back over it with my clear coat, the clear coat does not reactivate it, and it does not uh, get my decoupage paper damp, and it keeps it from wrinkling back up. I do know that decoupage paper will normally do that. If it does wrinkle, don't panic. You want to just let it sit, sometimes overnight, and I would say nine times out of ten, it will go ahead and flatten itself back out. So right here, I'm putting some different colors just along here willy-nilly. Um, I don't have a specific idea in mind. I just want to bring in the colors um, that, are lo that are on this paper um, on the edge. I just wanted to make this a really soft piece. And so I'm just going through and putting the colors wherever and I, wherever I feel I want a little more. This is a guacamole color by Dixie Bell. Holy guacamole, actually. I also used apricot and I used tea rose. And then I used my drop cloth that I originally painted it with to blend that in. I used my sprayer bottle and I had a brush for each color and then a, I usually would just blend it um, with my drop cloth brush. You may get a lot of uh, paint built up on your brush that you're blending with so I will go ahead and wipe that off every once in a while so that I don't muddy the colors and I get a nice variation of color without combining them into one color.
right. My paint is dried here at this point and I went over it with Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. I wanted to put a sealer over my paint because I'm going to be doing some different shading and um, I wanted to protect my paint and so that down the road with whatever I do, I can easily remove it. If I add paint or color or glaze and it gets on the paint I've already painted, I can easily pull that back if I don't want that on there. All right, so my clear coat has now dried. I'm going to take Dixie Belle uh, Grunge Gray and I'm going to put that into, well, I'm actually gonna paint it over my flowers. You're gonna want some baby wipes and I'm gonna take this glaze and I'm going to go over my flowers because I want that dark color to sit in the recesses of the flowers. It's going to make them pop. It's going to give them some depth and dimension. So that's what I'm doing here with the glaze. A glaze is different than a paint. A glaze to me, um, for a lack of a better term, I'd say is more slippery. It's got a longer open time. It doesn't dry as quick as paint. You can actually tint your glaze. A lot of times I'll add uh, caviar, the caviar color into the gray glaze and make it darker. Um, However, like I said earlier on this, I don't want this to be a real dark piece. I want it to be uh, real soft. I did want to give my flowers some depth. As you can see here, you can see where the, the petals of the flowers are a lot more noticeable once that glaze gets on there. So I go ahead and I put the glaze on and then you'll see in a moment that I'm going to take a baby wipe and I'm gonna wipe just off the top. So I'm gonna leave that gray glaze down into the cracks and crevices of the flowers to accentuate the petals. So here I'm taking a baby wipe and I am just going over the very top. I don't want to take that color I just put on there um, out of the cracks and crevices. I want to leave it in there, um, but I only want it down deep into the crevices. Uh, you'll see I'm going to take some other colors of paint and go over the top so that that will just give that dimension um, in those darker, or I should say deeper recessed areas. so that glaze has had a chance to dry and I actually went over that with a clear coat as well. I didn't want to reactivate my glaze with the paint that I was putting over the top, especially I'm going to be watering it down. I just want a real faint color over the top. So uh, this is soft pink that I'm adding on here. I'm not going to leave it that dark though. I'm actually going to wipe it back or spray it. Um, I did some different techniques on it just to kind of see what it would take to get it where I wanted it. I wanted these colors really light on here uh, just to kind of go with the whole theme of the owl picture. The picture itself is by uh, Grace on Design. Um, they come in a pack with a large picture, a medium picture, or a, yeah, I guess so you'd say a more medium picture, and then a companion paper. They're really fun. Um, I suggest you can go check those out. They just came out with a whole bunch of new papers too, so they're pretty incredible. 
I absolutely love taking these old cabinet doors and making art with them. They're perfect. They're perfect because they already have a really cool border around it. And this one was neat just because the shape was so different. Um, I had a lot of fun. I've done a lot of um, square and rectangular cabinet doors, but this is uh, was a treat kind of doing this one with the arch. Fit perfect with this little owl, I think. So um, I'm, I use the soft pink and then I'm using apricot and I'm also using uh, Lucky Lavender. These are all Dixie Belle paint colors, as you can see. And I'm just using the colors basically out of that owl picture to put on the flowers to give it, uh, to jazz it up a little more, make it cute. Okay, so you'll see here, I add paint, I spray with water, I take some paint away, but that's all part of the process. I have an idea of my, in my head of what I want it to look like. And so sometimes it takes a little bit by adding and taking away and doing different things and just seeing if you can get the effect that, that you've got in your mind of what you want this to look like. So that's why I'm going back and forth here. Um, hey guys, no right or wrong. Art is art. Whatever you wanna move forward with, and ideas you have in your head, you got to go for it. So here I'm adding a little bit of Lucky Lavender and I'm actually using a dry brush technique. And uh, what that consists of is what it sounds like, a dry brush. So you get your paint, you're gonna remove most of the paint <clears throat> from your brush and then you're gonna very, very lightly go over the top ridges of whatever you're painting. And all it does is it catches the very top, just like when we use the glaze to go down um, in the crevices, this is just going to go over the top and that helps to create that dimension on these um, little flowers that we've got on here. So what I would normally do is go around with a black wax, but as you see here, I actually wanted to do something lighter, but I did want to give it a little bit of depth and dimension. So I grabbed this holy guacamole and I thought, I'm gonna play around with this. If I would have had some clear wax, I actually would have mixed the holy, holy guacamole in with the clear wax and waxed it, but I didn't have any clear wax. And so as you see, I'm going around this flower and I'm taking the holy guacamole and then I'm gonna work that color. I'm gonna leave it deeper next to the flower and I'm gonna pull it out. And then you'll see, I actually end up wiping quite a bit of it off but it does get the effect that I wanted with a softer look than say the brown or the black wax would have been. I was actually very happy with the outcome. Like I said, you just have to play with things, guys. You just never know. I really um, enjoyed this process and it came out exactly like I wanted it.
so here we go again we're adding some color we're taking it away i was just trying to keep it keep more of a color um up against the up against the flowers to give it that depth and then pulling that green out um, i did add sometimes some water to my paintbrush which helped to pull some of the color too and then dabbed it off with the shop towel and um, just kept playing with it until i got that look that i wanted If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more fun projects. Thanks for watching.